Mr. Clue. Posted at the doorway to the VIP section is a tower of troll muscle wrap wrapped in an impossibly tailored suit. Whether the product of good genes or expenses or expensive aftermarket market cosmetic work, the troll's gleaming horns perfectly frame his face, and his polished tusks and goatee accentuate the set of a lantern jaw. Welcome. Please behave yourself. Uh Do we get trouble here often? Nothing a stern look nothing a stern look can usually solve. You have business here? I'm looking into the death of Sam Watts. Heard about that. Real shame what happened to him. There's a sharpness in Clue's eyes, the look of a man who has seen much and earned wisdom at a young age. In your role here, I suppose you often escorted Sam to the door? Yes, albeit gently. Sam was a drunk, but he usually wasn't a violent one. What about the night he died? He was a bit agitated, didn't catch the specifics, might have been over a woman. Thought I was going to have to show him out, but I had to deal with a couple of rival go-gangers posturing for one of the working girls upstairs. Jake helped Sam out instead. Thanks for the inter info. No problem. No problem. Let's move in. Thank you, Mr. Clue. He's a nice guy. This is Mrs. Kubota. Um, we're going to talk to her, her first, I'm guessing. Because she's the boss around here. Mrs. Kubota watches you cross the room, sizing you up as you approach. As you get closer, you can see that she's of mixed race, African and Japanese. Her demeanor says, this is my house. Mess with it at your peril. But her eyes twinkle with a playful light when she speaks. Konbawa! Good evening! I'm sorry if I completely messed the pronunciation of that up, but I have no idea. Is it true what they say? Good things come in small packages? Are you enjoying the seamstresses union? There should be plenty for a man like you to enjoy. She eyes you closely. Or is this business? Business. I suspected as much when you walked in. Oh my. What business do you have with me? I'm looking for information. Of course you are. Knowledge is power, eh? So I've been told. It's okay. And why should I help you? Uh, Sam Watts. I'm looking for his killer. Ah, so you are the little insurance policy he would go on about when he was drunk. His avenging angel, angel who would strike back for, for him from beyond the grave. What do you want to know? Uh, how well did you know Sam? I knew him. We all did. Sam was a regular here. Whenever he could beg or borrow enough Nguyen to become altered in some way, drugs, chips, alcohol, it didn't matter to Sam, as long as he was bent, he was always looking for his next fix. His next fix. He clung to this place like it was a lifeline, and we treated him as part of the family, even if none of us truly liked him, except Coyote. Did you see Sam on the night of his death? He was here, quite inebriated, inebriated, as he often was. Coyote was working bar at night, and she informed me that Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with other customers. When I requested he leave, he refused. My bouncer, Mr. Clue, was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort Sam out the back door to the alley. That was the last I saw of either of them. Um, why is this place called the Seamstresses Union? Well, during the gold rush years there was a census, and the politicians wanted as high a number as possible to gain power and revenue. To bolster their numbers, they decided to include all the working girls, of which there were many, to the roles. However, given the times, they could not list the girls' true occupations, so they entered them as all as seamstresses. When a girl accumulated enough money to open her own place of business, she named it the seamstresses union so potential workers would know that they would be treated fairly there. And thus a rich tradition was born. So you're a former seamstress? 
No. Perhaps when we know each other more, I will reveal more about myself. For now, enjoy the union. One more question. Can you tell me where to find Coyote? What did I could? I have not seen her in two days. She, just, uh, see, she is a smart woman and quite dangerous, but I fear for her. Uh... If she's smart, why fear for her? Because she's in a dangerous line of work and there is always someone smarter, more prepared. Her room is upstairs. If you are looking for her, invi I invite you to examine it. You may be able to uh, uncover her whereabouts. I would not normally betray her pri privacy this way, but she's missed two shifts now and cannot be reached on her calm. It is unlike her. If something has happened, I will not have inaction on my conscience. Here is the key. Thank you. Let's uh, go and check out her room then. Locked. What's this? There's a mid-grade security panel attached to the nearby door. It's said to require a password. Okay. Oh, that's what decking is. Okay. I'm guessing the replay value of this kind of game is quite high. There's something in here I can pick up. Nothing to see. No. Okay. Next room then. Mm. Sorry, yawning. Um. So, what's going on in here? Pile of rubble. Looks like Coyote keeps her clothes in boxes on the floor. What's this? A com uh, computer. The stand is littered with action movies and cigarette buns. Butts. A frame painting of the Chicago skyline down in s done in stylized silhouette. What's on the bed? The oldest bed has a diary with several pages sticking out of it. Well... Let's read the first paper. There's a receipt stuck between the pages and a diary entry. Read the diary. I came back from my shift to find four of Paco's goons sleeping on our apartment floor. It's getting fragging ridic ridiculous. I want to be with him, but with the real Paco, but this cutter drag keeps messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with the gang. It's how I make cash, baby, he always says. I try to tell him he doesn't need the cash. I can support, uh, support us both with what I make at the seamstresses. Union, but he still goes on these runs. With these bozos all over my floor, I feel like he's just seeing how far he can pun push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient, but why does he have? Does it have to be all one way? A receipt for a Browning Max power pistol from Gin Park downstairs, with a note saying how big guns on hot women turn her on. Okay, I'll have to ask uh, Jin Park downstairs. Flip to a different page. Second paper. Handwritten poem and a diary. Sometimes it seems like Paco reads my mind. Or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Paco. Ever since last week, he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. He leaves the apartment with a C in a few hours, babe. And returns later without comment. I don't know if it's really going to help for us avoid the subject in conversation completely but I have felt better without our constant arguing about it Hold on. let's just say that Paco should stick to guns and motorcycles and leave the poetry to others I was kind of looking forward to reading <laughs> a dumb poem but whatever third paper a receipt and an old photograph look at the picture it shows a young girl with caramel skin and dark brown hair. She has a snake wrapped around her arm and... She has a snake wrapped around her arm, yet she is smiling. The back of the photograph has shadow scrawled on it. Inspect the receipt. A COD, res a COD receipt for a special order. Five po pounds of zebra meat from Maury's Meat Emporium. Locked, located near Pike Place Market. So why did sh the, this girl need meat and a big gun? Is she hunting some big thing? 
a receipt for a wall safe installed near the bathroom door, set to a combination of 342436. Okay, fourth paper. Oh, that's all it is. Well, let's put the diary back down and go inspect that safe. And look this, uh, this too. 